Get your hands up to clap. Hey Mortal Kombat fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. We are less than one month away from all of us screaming out. <laughs> It's gonna be a fantastic couple of days while I annoy my family saying that over and over. But what I'm gonna be talking about here today, guys, is a bunch of news outlets got to see the first 12 to 13 minutes of Mortal Kombat. And because of this, they went ahead and wrote a description of what exactly we're gonna be seeing those first couple minutes into the movie. And it sounds pretty amazing. It's definitely something I wanted to go ahead and share and talk to you guys about. Not only that, we have the producers of the Mortal Kombat movie confirming that they want Johnny Cage part of the sequel and even name dropping a very popular popular celebrity that y'all were giving me crap about but producer said his name himself so be sure you guys leave me your opinions down below on what you think of this opening for the mortal kombat movie as well as how do you feel about the way the producers are describing the way they want to use johnny cage for the sequel so like i was saying there's a bunch of news outlets that got to see the first 12 to 13 minutes of mortal kombat some of the ones that i was reading off were like bloody disgusting's website or even screen rant but the one that i'm going to be using that i found with the most detail and kind of has a little surprising twist that gives us an insight to one of the main characters in the mortal kombat movie is from sci-fi wire so so diving straight into it, here are the first 12 minutes of the Mortal Kombat movie. Mortal Kombat begins in 1617 feudal Japan at home of Hanso Hashi, the leader of the Shiri Ryu clan. A loving father and dotting husband, he and his wife share a tender moment before he heads off to fetch water from the river as his wife gardens and his son, Jubi, heads to the house to try and stop his baby sister from crying. While Hanzo is away, Bihan, played by Joe Taslin, leader of the Lin Kuei rival clan, attacks, but not before or Kana hides the baby. When Hanzo returns, he only has moments to mourn his wife and son frozen in a block of ice before he single-handedly takes out 15 Lin Kuei assassins with brutal efficiency. Bihan waits until the final members are dispatched before calmly explaining, this is the end of your bloodline. Your mighty clan, Shirai Ryu, have been extorted by me, Bihan. Hanzo, who does not speak his language, does not understand his words, but the meaning is clear and the two finish their discussion through an epic, brutal fight in the woods. After Bihan delivers the killing blow, Hanzo spends his final moments bleeding out trying to get back to his house to protect his crying baby girl. After his final breath, fire erupts from within his body reducing him to ashes and moments later a bolt of lightning brings Raiden to earth. He finds the baby girl hidden under the floorboards of the Hasashi home and leaves with the child the way he came. Now I know that might not have been as exciting especially with my obvious mispronouncing of some of these epic names. Sorry okay I'm Basic white boy named Chris. Can you blame me? But one of the reasons I picked this outlet out of the many others who went ahead and described what they saw in the 12 minutes of footage is this is the only article that specifies that the baby that gets taken away by Raiden and that was hidden away and was not killed off by Sub-Zero, who is Bihan, even though he hasn't fully become Sub-Zero yet, what it seems like at the beginning of this opening scene. A lot of our theories out there where we think Cole Young is the hidden bloodline member to Scorpion, Hanzo, because in the trailers it seems very obvious that Cole Young is having flashes to Scorpion and some have even suggested that by the end of the movie Cole Young will take on the mantle of either Scorpion or Sub-Zero but then bringing myself back to reality I gotta remember it says right here that the movie opens up in the year 1617 and this Mortal Kombat movie is set in present day which is in the 2020s so if that's the case then no way Cole Young is several hundreds years old all that is left to be said then it looks like Cole Young is somehow going to be a descendant of this baby that was saved by Lord Raiden and then through generations of generations of generations we end up with Cole Young which is why he has the Mortal Kombat marking and it's his destiny to be fighting and part of the tournament. Other than that this sounds pretty awesome and glad that the movie is actually going to be setting up that whole feud between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. I just hope they also dive in deeper to why even though this event and this rivalry started hundreds of years ago in 1617 how are they going to explain that Scorpion is brought back to life as this killer assassin? Same thing with Sub-Zero. But moving on from the opening of the movie, getting on to what we've all been speculating as Mortal Kombat fans, kind of upset that Johnny Cage is not going to be in this movie. Johnny Cage is one of my favorite characters, and I think it's also someone so unique that could work so well in this Mortal Kombat film. And now we know they are definitely saving Johnny Cage as the main lead 
for the second movie. Here's what the producer had to say on that. Todd Gardner went ahead and said, I want to make a sequel and I've now got Johnny Cage, which hasn't been used in the first one. So I have a big stick and a carrot that maybe they'll let me have a Johnny Cage real presence in the second one. And secondarily, when you think about Mortal Kombat, if you think about the patina of the movie, it has a very Asian feel to it. And I early on felt uncomfortable having a white male lead kind of lead that charge in the first movie. It just felt Hollywoodish to me, which is weird because he's an actor, which also is weird and probably my bias. It just feels weird if I'm trying to do and I was doing something different and diverse and true. Is it a cop out to all of a sudden have Ryan Reynolds, not him, but as the lead felt a little disingenuous to me and super easy to bring him in in a big bombastic fun way in the second. And he deserves that as a character. I love these characters. So we thought hard about it. And that right there is really interesting to me because the way he describes Johnny Cage is if they're going to bring him in to any future Mortal Kombat movie, they want this boy to kind of be the lead and also lead the team because he says here to lead that charge. The other reason he said he didn't bring in the Johnny Cage character in this first movie when talking to Collider is he said he feels that his personality matched a little too much with Kano. That's someone we are going to be getting in the Mortal Kombat movie saying that both of them are egotistical guys who throw off one-liners trying to be funny and the studio really just did not want to have a lot of duplicate characters in their first film which is also one of the reasons they didn't bring in a character like Rain. He said here that they wanted to bring in Rain but they felt they already had Reptile which now confirming yep this guy right here seems to be Reptile even though not completely in love with that design. Kind of would have wanted them to go a little something more traditional, but all right. But since they're both guys who have cloaking abilities, the studio really did not want to go ahead and do that. Which should kind of give you in mind to future movies in the Mortal Kombat universe. If you have two characters that are very similar to each other, it doesn't seem like they're going to want to pop them in here, which is why I also get comments all the time of how could you have Molina and not Katana in the movie? And well, I know picky Mortal Kombat fans will go, they're not really the same character. To a studio spending millions of dollars if they even have the same sort of weaponry or slight hint of personality they think of them as the exact same character which is why i'm thinking melina is not going to survive in this movie and then in the sequel katana will be introduced as the sister who wants revenge for her sister who got killed I also can't just fly by the fact that he went ahead and mentioned ryan reynolds right there but then quickly goes not him so maybe ryan reynolds is someone they had in mind to be johnny cage i think that is someone perfect ryan reynolds is pretty good at playing that charming attractive but also very physically capable actor that Johnny Cage is and that has always been my reasoning for why I thought Johnny Cage wasn't in the first movie is because they want to see if they can earn those big box office numbers to be able to hire a real big celebrity like a Johnny Cage a Chris Pratt heck I'll even throw Kamani Nanjiel in there I know he's not the traditionally white guy and you guys hate race swapping and whatnot but this photo right here lets me know this guy would be perfect as Johnny Cage I just wonder with them saying that they want Johnny Cage to be the real man lead and presence of the movies how is that going to work when it's obvious that you're setting up Cole Young as the main character of this franchise you brought him in for a reason you're introducing this weird legacy involved I think a lot of diehard Mortal Kombat fans will be fine with them switching things up and then in the second movie Johnny Cage is more of the main character which I got to bring up a fan theory I heard in the comment section so I can't even take credit for it but I think this would be amazing what if in the sequel after the events of Mortal Kombat the world finds out you know Earth Realm and these fighters save the world and then like Hollywood has it they want to make a Mortal Kombat movie based on the real life events in their universe and they hire Johnny Cage to play Cole Young and then that's your introduction for him wanting to meet him study him and learn how to be him in this fake Mortal Kombat movie like that would be perfect. But those are just a couple of updates currently going on with the Mortal Kombat movie. I want to know your guys' opinions down below. How do you guys feel about these first couple of minutes of the Mortal Kombat movie? Do you think it's really going to set the tone for the film? Who do you think this mysterious baby that Raiden went ahead and took away? And how are you feeling about them wanting to bring in Johnny Cage as the big guy for the sequel? Anything and everything, be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.